For Deep Sports Talk would like to thank its supporters, including PTU Clinic. Find out more about Bridgewater and Buzzards Bay's newest physical therapy clinic and what they have to offer at ptuclinic.com. Adria Restaurant and Banquet Facility located at 436 Oak Street in East Bridgewater. Visit adriarestaurant.net for more. Diesel Direct, your reliable source for fuel delivery. Log on to dieseldirect.com to get more information. And by the New England Knockouts, Brockton's brand new Frontier League baseball team. Get your tickets for the inaugural season today at knockoutsbaseball.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome to 4 Deep Short Stock here at the news station, 1320 AM Atterboro. I'm Justin Ferrer, a.k.a. the Sports Messer, and now a word from our sponsor. This segment of 4 Deep Sports Talk is made possible by the generous support of Diesel Direct. Diesel Direct, the national fuel resource in 46 states, boasts a fleet of over 900 fuel delivery trucks. 4 Deep Sports Talk would like to congratulate Diesel Direct on its 25th year anniversary. Thank you, Diesel Direct, for your unwavering support, helping us provide a platform for high school and youth athletes in southeastern Massachusetts. All right, so we are happy. I know we want to get want to make sure we get the introduction there. We are happy to have one of our Hall of Famers. For people who saw it on YouTube, we had the great, distinct pleasure of highlighting this gentleman in studio right now, Jim Kelleher, along with uh, Armin Colombo. Of course, his, bro- his son Peter is there, and Bob Fisher. And again, we, Jim, we want to take you for thank you for coming up, taking the time, and. Uh, we yeah, welcome. welcome, welcome to the show, yeah. and, and just for I'm everyone a, I'm a knows, and, and Bob Fisher. Yeah, those are those are guys that, you know, certainly I grew up w- uh, with and hearing their names all the time. And we had a wonderful uh, basketball um, ceremony last uh, the last Saturday. Yeah. Um, it was a wonderful event. I'm so happy for all the uh, the you know inductees as well as uh, the recipients of all the awards. And um, I'll be posting more pictures nice. up there. So. Um, very, very happy to have Jim in studio today. Yep. I know your lovely wife is sitting out there yeah. just kind of <laughs> looking on the phone. <laughs> I thought she was going to come in here. Well, we could turn okay. the volume up, too. Could we just make sure he's in the shot? Yeah. Okay. So why don't we go with our first question, Sportsmaster. <laughs> we'll dive right in. We'll, we'll, we'll ham him right now. He's ready. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, what does being inducted into the Fort D. Hall of Fame mean to you? Well, uh, it means... You know, certainly the the, the uh, fact that as I as I went along, uh, and not when I say I, I certainly mean my coaches and my my players. Okay, uh, we probably did some things right uh, to to get us noticed, and uh, I think uh, we, we're we're very appreciative of that. You know, myself and, and my staffs that that I, that I've dealt with over the years. So uh, it's basically, what, as you well know, I mean the kids make the difference you know and all we want to do is get them uh get them the idea of growing up a little and you know maturing a little bit and understanding that sometimes there's going to be some uh you have to you have to take on something and you have to be responsible for its positive or negative results you know just like we do as coaches so so what was one of the hardest things to teach like i told you before like i mentioned about the freshman stuff that i love basically glorified Pop one of football. Yeah. But for the coaches that want to come and work on the varsity, the varsity level, what advice can you give them to get ready for not just for any varsity sport as far as coaching goes? Uh, I don't know. I would have to simply say that you know you look for you, you look for in the, within that group and you try to uh, talk to some teachers uh, uh, in, in 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 that school about this person or that person to see how they how they're reacting and what they're doing in school as opposed to wh- how I see him in, on the football field, yeah. you know, because there's a difference. And when you find out that uh, there's so many positive things that this, this person does, you know, uh, let's, let's look at him, uh, you know, as someone that we might have to be able to use if we have, a, we have to talk to, to him so he can get into the, the group of the players in the locker room uh, without maybe me having to do that. 508-222-1320 if you want to call and talk to Coach Kelleher as we recap the award ceremony from last Saturday and Jim educates us on everything football. <laughs> <laughs> so to add to that question, so my next question 
uh, to add, actually add to my own question. So <clears throat> how many times or, can, or do you remember where you were like just walking, you know, because you're a teacher, you just walked into the school and you see one, hypothetically, a soccer player and like, that kid has a pretty good foot. Yeah. Or you look at one of the big guys and he didn't know where to go to travel for the football team, but he thought about it. Yeah. And then he right. ends up being like a diamond in the rough. How many times yeah. does that happen? Uh, like the, pretty, pretty, uh, quite a few. Yeah. Quite a few, you know. Uh, you, do, you do look certainly as you're in class and you, uh, as you're standing in, at the break, you know, d as classes move, move around and, and that nature and from what you hear from your players themselves. Uh, I think boy or girl, if you get involved into something within your school, other than just simply waking up in the morning and coming to school and going to period one, two, three, four, gym class, you know, and then going home, you know, if you don't somehow get involved, you miss a lot of fun from your friends that you have in the school with you to, to integrate, uh, you know, at, at these things, whether it be a, a play, whether it be uh, a sport, whether it be anything else, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't matter what it is, right. okay? Not everybody can can play, but I've always I've always said to those players who say I'm not that good. I said, hey, you come out here and you just work at it. If you work at it, you're gonna find out that you're gonna find you find out that you were a little bit wrong because you can get it done if you work at it. It it it, it just can't come. You got to work at it. For a couple people, you know, they have it instilled within them because of the genes of mom and dad, and you know they. They don't have to work that hard, but at the same time, anybody from a high school kid to a college kid to a pro kid, you're only going to get better if you work at it. Right. Or give it a try. Yeah. Just give, give it, it a try. try. Really. <laughs> Truly. Right. You know, because there's a lot, just as much fun that you have with you, within the classroom, all right, you're, you're going to have just as much fun with that buddy of yours on, on the uh, sports field. Mm-hmm. 508-222-1320. I want to make sure I get it out there because I keep on blo I, I always wait till the second half. I want to make sure oh. they – you know how you know, sometimes <laughs> yeah. I blow it all True. the time. I, I, I should get an award for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jim, over the course of 50-plus 50, 50 years yeah. coaching, um, the same school? Yeah, the same Abington? school. Uh, even I even graduated from there. Oh, you know? my goodness. Uh, so it, it was really, really good. I mean, I can remember – Graduating from college, I went to, went to college and I did four and a half years and I graduated in, in January and I got a real nice job uh, with a transportation company uh, uh, that, that did everything from the Mississippi over to New England, okay? So uh, I, I was doing very well, you know, and that was in, you know, 60, uh, 71, you know, and... Uh, Thirty-one thousand dollars as for for yearly pay was pretty good, okay. Sure, back but, in I the mean, day, yes. Yeah, so uh, I was really happy with that, and uh, then all of a sudden, the, the the school principal called me and said, you know, we have a football job opening. Uh, would you like to have that? Wow. You know, and I I said, oh yeah, you bet your life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and all of a sudden I found out that. You know, being thirty-three thousand with my job, all of a sudden I'm going down to fifteen thousand. You know, for school. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned that the yeah. retirement. Yeah, at the award ceremony. That's funny. <laughs> that's funny. I thought about like my God. Ooh, I don't know if I... <laughs> but you know, my dad ran his own business, so anytime I had free time, I was just back on uh, delivering an oil truck. To, <laughs> that's oil awesome. To, to homes, right. You, you know? definitely had a good uh, backup uh, plan. Doing doing the breaker on a asphalt driveway. Oh wow! That's oh, what there I did. you go. All right, we have our first caller. How you first on Four Deep Sports Talk? As we highlight Hall of Famer Jim Kelleher. Hello, thanks for taking my call. Absolutely, Coach Kelleher. Okay, I was curious. I got to get some volume here. How's that? Is that better? A little louder. Go go ahead. Yeah, Coach Keller, congratulations on your award last week. It was a pleasure to meet you and uh, meet you and your wife. I was wondering if you noticed a difference in the uh, the athletes after COVID. Where they couldn't participate. Uh, I don't think, I, I, to me, I didn't think there was that much of a difference. Hmm. All right, I thought it, they, you know, they were a little bit uh, talking more about it, so that they can, have, so that making sure that uh, you know we, you know, they're wondering whether we're doing things right for the players that are on the team. So maybe n nothing appears to 
go through our through our team in terms of a, a, an illness or something like that. So, but uh, it was important, and you had to think about it. And we'd had discussions as a, as a staff, you know, t- trying to make sure that uh, you know we do the best thing possible for the kids because it, the most important thing for anyone, whether it be girls, boys, basketball, soccer, all right. The, the health and the welfare of the, of the kid is the most important thing, no matter what it is in terms of winning a good game, losing the game, uh, having an all-star, this or that. The, the health and the welfare of the kid is the most important thing. Do you have another question for him? I think that's it. Well, thank you, thank you. Thank you for I the call. I appreciate it, giving the you call in. Thanks, that's honey. Like- <laughs> That's my husband, Lou. Thank you, thank you, Lou. Yep. Oh, I was I was trying to be anonymous and like, oh, thank you, thank you, caller. That was really well, nice. Well, he had a ball in. last week, so oh, you know, just good. the atmosphere of everything. Good. He loved the setup. You know, he he went around and met some people, and nice. he thought, wow, this is pretty prestigious here. Right. <laughs> you it know, turned, it'll look good. Notice how we advanced. And they're in the ceremony. <laughs> I actually have another thing we were going to do with as far as the interviews after it. You know, we kind of yeah, it yeah. in, but I'll describe that to you later. Otherwise, we, we'll lose our time with Jim over oh, here. Oh, <laughs> right ahead. All right, we're getting ready to take our first break. We've got about a minute left if you want to call in 508 222 1320. As you can tell, for the people who have never heard the show, we're not like the pro station. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong and blow you up and kick you <laughs> off the air. <laughs> so we just want to let you know that. Again, 508, excuse me, 2221320. The sportsmaster has some questions. He'll be coming back with those at the second after the second break. And I would love to hear from you again. And I got to, I, Jim, I keep on messing this up. I Usually what I do is we'll, we'll get in the conversation and I'll wait. Oh, my God, I gave the message. I gave the phone number like, 15 minutes before the show went off the air. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm wondering why nobody's calling, you know. Oh, I'm bad. I'm bad. Uh, my own. But um, we have a full slate coming up. We'll talk about that at the very end of the hour. We have we have Janu- We have the rest of May filled for scheduling. We have the rest of June awesome. filled. Oh, it's awesome. It is awesome. And I, even, I still have to get um, a couple of other guys in there that were at the awards ceremony. Great. These are just coaches coming in and people, you know, and all that other this stuff. This is great. All right, with that being said, you are listening to 4 Deep Sports Talk here on the news station, 1320 AM WARA. We have the distinct privilege. We're having Hall of Famer Abington coach Jim Kelleher. We'll be back with him and more right after this. My junior year of college, I decided I wanted to be a truck driver. So my uncle, he works here for like 40 plus years, and he said, choose these direct, don't go nowhere else. Lo que me inspiró a mí fue mi mi teatro cuando él se graduó con su CD. I was telling my stepdad and my brother, hey, you know, this is probably one of the best jobs I've ever had, and I was showing them the type of income that I was making. The equipment that we have at Diesel Direct is the best. I need to go in the big unit, the Chacachera, so I'm trying to work myself up. I never really had a career before this, but I just want to do my job well and be accepted. And I feel like a lot of people, that's all they want, right? And you definitely get that here. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to 4D Short Stock here at the news station, 1320 AM Atterboro. We are highlighting Jim Kellinger, and my next question for you is, actually, uh, can you t- tell us your journey of uh, the possibility of playing for the New York Giants? Yes. Uh, I played football at the University of Massachusetts, and uh, I, I had five seasons there, and uh, 
my first four seasons from freshman, junior, uh, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, all right, uh, I basically sat on a sideline, you know, uh, and uh, my, f my fifth year there, okay, I, I made sure that, I mean, I had worked out and did all those things, I just, it didn't work out for me and that was understandable, okay, but in my fifth year there, I, I was able to uh, get a starting job as a defensive end and I made all New England All East uh, defense event, so I was very happy with that. Wow, and so then, you stuck uh, it out. Yeah, wow. and then uh, I went to my fave. I did get a, get a, uh, a, a, a call with the, from New York Giants to come out and, and uh, have a, have a train, training session there, and that was, you know, because when I grew up, that was the only team we saw in New England. That's true. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> way <laughs> before the, the Boston Giants. Patriots. Oh, yeah. Yeah, way, way before. before the Boston Patriots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, and uh, it was exciting. It tru truly, really was, and everything was going well. It was going great, and the the, uh, the coaches were happy with me, and I was happy with the coaches, and uh, it was it was working well, and I, and I was just ecstatic, thinking, oh gosh, here did my my dream come true, and then all of a sudden, uh, the athletic director called and said, hey, we're going to offer you the head football job at Abington. Oh uh, and I my said, hey, who, goodness! Who is <laughs> I said, come on. I said, are you kidding me? He said, what's wrong? I said, I'm at the New York Giants. I get, I get a, 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 a uh, it's, it's Wednesday, and we, and we get a, a, a preseason game coming up oh, this Friday. Goodness. <laughs> you know? Oh. He says, okay, well, just tell me one way or the other, and I, and I get need to know by tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, by tomorrow? Wow. Yeah. Wow. You know, so. Uh, Life-changing decision. I just went down. Saw my coach and he, he looked at me and said, "Are you serious?" <laughs> <laughs> His eyes are like this. Are you serious? You are leaving to go back to coach it. You can get a high school job coaching anyway, anytime. I said, says, "Yeah, but this is my hometown." You yeah. know. Wow. So that's where it all started. So that's where it all started. Wow. So that was in uh, like I said, nineteen seventy uh, seventy one in the fall. And what made you arrive at that decision? I mean, overnight, well, basically. I mean, it, it, it was hard. I'm sure it was. It was, it was really hard, you know, because I was excited and, and uh, you know, my family, was, my dad was excited. And, and But at the same time, it was coming back home, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, I had a great coach when I was in high school, and he made me, he, was, he would, certainly was one guy that helped me love the game of football, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and then the, as I said, I went, went to college and I had a great time there. And here I am coming back. And I know this, this was a commitment thing now. This is going to be my life. Um, I had gotten married and I got to make sure we take care of the family, you know. So uh, I, wow. I gave, it, gave it up. And it wasn't easy, as I said, I gave it up and I just jumped right into it. You know, you know it's funny. Anybody who comes into the show or shows up on the show, I always tell them at the end. Even our interns, you know, always remember where you came from. Yeah, right. and it always sticks with them because they all seem to come back. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> but That's you true. went to it right from the get go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, I, it's still sometimes I sit down and think about it, and, I, and my, I'm going around in circles. I no, nah, I did the right thing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'll tell you, talk about dedication for a hometown. Right. I mean, right. besides maybe I'm in Colombo, I don't know if I ever heard anything <laughs> like that before. Seriously, that's if you take my incredible. as I said, if you take my four years of playing there, I have been associated with Avenue High School for 57 years. Oh, that's right. a long time. <laughs> oh my God. So the head coach you were uh, referring to is that Walter Pester? Yes. Mm. Then it was Walter Pestuzak. Pestuzak. Yeah, because that that was his that was his. Uh, Family name and okay. It, oh, people okay. were at that time. People were having too hard of a time pronouncing uh, <laughs> pronouncing <laughs> stuff. So we went to pastor. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, well, the, well, the pastor, great guy, absolute great guy. Obviously, a huge influence yeah, in your life. Really, wow. truly. Wow. So wow. Nate Rollins wants to know from the Whitman Hanson <laughs> Express. Okay. What those and I, we talked about this out in the lobby earlier. What those rivalries on Thanksgiving Day meant to you playing Whitman Hanson the uh, Panthers all the time. It's, you, you don't realize how much fun it is. You don't realize, you know, the the the, 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 the highlight of that game. 
all right? No matter what you've done during the year, no matter what they've done during the year, uh, you look at it and you say, man, we are two fortunate teams, okay, to be able to have this have this game on Thanksgiving. First of all, you don't travel very far. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> all right? That's true. Okay. And, but the second thing is there's a good number of kids on that Whitman Hanson team and there's a good number of kids on that Abington team that know each other, you ah. know. So they're always talking when they're out with their uh, buddies during the season on that Saturday night, uh, Sunday or whatever it might be. And uh, then all of a sudden you hit the game all right, on Thanksgiving and they look around at the crowd and there's, you know, 20,000 people there. Packed. Awesome. Packed. Yep. <laughs> all right. Okay, and you're playing in that situation, so it was it was a great thing to have, great thing to have. even though it was difficult to get a get a W every once in a while on Thanksgiving. Ooh. So the, now the, it is my coach mentality thinking, and how is how important is the t- like? A lot of times, most of the time, you guys were playoff bound yeah. because you guys took your talent, and sometimes Whitman Hanson weren't playoff bound, but they were always that spoiler. Oh yeah, and sometimes you want to sit the stud. Have them play, and I please correct me. You might have them play the first quarter, maybe the second half. You're done. You got playoffs. Yeah. How important is it to emphasize that, especially when you're playoff bound, so to prevent those injuries? Yes, I know. Uh, but the first thing that we talked about amongst the coaches was the fact that uh, we have a game. Yep. All right. It's Thanksgiving. All right. And there's there's a lot to be said about this game. All right, so this game has is more important than whatever we're doing going on to uh, playoffs after the after the season after the Thanksgiving Day. Yep. All right, so we didn't even think about that. We just d- worked our practices with with whatever it was th- that we did during the whole week, whole year in front of in back of us to be the same thing because we wanted to be ready. All right, when we when we got uh, the ball snapped on Thanksgiving Day game. Uh, and uh, that's the that's just the way I did it. And there were times when we got a couple kids hurt and this and that. But overall, I think we we did a pretty good job. You know, we were we were healthy, pretty much all of the all of the time. All right, right. Uh, when we we're going into the playoffs, and we have we had a game the next ten days later, whatever it was. I like the depth your team always had. And, uh, you know, you always thought about, okay, maybe they didn't play this guy on Thanksgiving. Or maybe, which you know better than everybody in this room, is that maybe they had the scheme to actually beat you that game, even though you might have been playing or took you to the limit. Yeah. But you always had the next guy, the next mentality, next man up mentality. That player was ready to go into that game. We, I know I uh, found out a good number of years beforehand that, no matter what, get those kids who are sitting on the sideline for a good point in time uh, during the game. Get them on, on in, involved in the game, yeah. all right? Because it only can help you, right? Okay, and they're going to make them happy, and it's going to really solidify the the togetherness of the team. Okay, so we, as coaches, we made sure that during during the week, and it started right in the first week, that. Uh, you know, get those kids some time. Now, in, in the beginning, it, they may not have getting too much, but as we get more comfortable and the season went on, you know, uh, and we, we're doing the same thing on Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yep. all right, that, you know, we would get get the rotations going, yep. whether it be on the kickoff, the, any, any of the special team situations, any of the uh, any the offensive situations, defensive situations, uh Long situations, short situations. All right, we had we made sure that we got we got everybody that we think that can help us in there, right? Because it's going to be better better for us in the long run to get kids involved. And it showed, coach. Every time I went to an Abington game, I watched it. You know, and you know, me being a nosy fan, you didn't know who I was at the time. Like, who's that fat guy in the sideline <laughs> right over there? Oh, he's eating a hot dog. Now he has popcorn. <laughs> like, I won't stop. But you're poaching. And I'm saying to myself, I'm watching you guys play, and I'm like, uh, he has a next man up mentality. That kid is ready to play. Because you look for mannerisms. Is he going to be passive? Yeah. Is he going to understand that? Right. Uh, what you know? How he's going to react to the ball? 
And it's like yeah. the kid was a starter. Yeah. yeah. You know, he's coming he's, off the bench. Exactly. Right? And he would go in. I'm like, wow, that's pretty impressive. Because mm -hmm. you always look for the mannerisms be, being a coach or whatever, a fan. Like, oh, this kid's going to back off. He's going to be passive. They're going to run to his ball. His side of the ball, he'll have, like, big egg, egg, egg white eyes looking at yeah. him. Coming up. <laughs> but they step up, fill the hole, and stop the potential I mean, run. I, I would talk to my assistant coaches, and I would always say to them, hey, you know, get talking to the players okay, to see how they feel, Yeah. all right, and get the rotations going, particularly at practice. If I don't do it, I make some mistake, I get involved somewhere else, and it, it, I just forget about it, you know. Get get that in there, get, hit me on the side of the head, and make sure we get those, <laughs> those uh, you know, those kids playing, because they're going to help us. Yeah, exactly. They're going to help us, and they're going to be just as much of a major factor in our success as all the starters were. Yeah, you sure. really did an unbelievable job over there at Yeah, Abington. as a team. Yeah. Right. I mean, even when even that was fairly fair and far between, uh, as far as not having a winning record, all those green wave teams competed. Yeah. When they went against the stronger team, that if it was that particular time in that season, all the teams competed. Mm -hmm. No matter if they were a younger team, they were playing like a say, uh, a uh, a stud Duxbury team at the time. They always competed in those games. Yeah. And that's a credit to you and your coaching staff and. And I used to, again, I'd be the fat guy with the hot dog. I'm like, wow, this is pretty cool. <laughs> I'm like, I can't believe they only won so many games and not playing. Wow, that's really, you know, it was so entertaining to watch. And you could see what you and your coaches put into this team, no matter what the record was, yeah. you know. It was, again, it was just a tribute to you and the way you, the way you used to approach those games. It was really impressive to watch, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, as a football fan. All right, we're getting ready to take our second break. This hour is flying by. Uh -huh. <laughs> if you want to call in when we get back, please do not be afraid. I promise I'll keep you on the line at 508-222-1320. <laughs> we have the Hall of Famer, Jim Kelleher from Abington High School. We'll be right back. My junior year of college, I decided I wanted to be a truck driver. So my uncle, he works here for like 40 plus years, and he said, choose these direct, don't go nowhere else. Lo que me inspiró a mí fue mi mi teatro cuando él se graduó con su CD. I was telling my stepdad and my brother, hey, you know, this is probably one of the best jobs I've ever had, and I was showing them the type of income that I was making. The equipment that we have at Diesel Direct is the best. I need to go in the big unit, the Chacachera, so I'm trying to work myself up. I never really had a career before this, but I just want to do my job well and be accepted. And I feel like a lot of people, that's all they want, right? And you definitely get that here. Welcome back to 40 Sports Talk. This is Catherine, a.k.a. KC, with the rest of the crew, highlighting Jim Ab Jim Kelleher. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually wanted to read something that's from the Green Wave, the Abington Green Wave. So it's a grid Gridiron Golf, open June 14th. Donations and gift cards are welcomed. Awesome. Yeah. So if anyone can see that on the live... Please feel free to. It's a fun yes, that's, uh, that's KC on TikTok that's over here Kate. for us. Thank you, We're getting a ton Thank of you. views. So talk about that a little bit. What's going on? Uh, a golf fundraiser? Yeah, they're doing a fundraiser, like Catherine just said, Green Wave, which is obviously Abington High School Gridiron Golf, um, Gridiron Golf Open, okay. the tournament on June fourteenth. Donation gift. Where are we playing this? I forgot. Uh, that's at Strawberry Valley in Abington. Awesome. There we go. So we know where we're playing. Yeah. We'll have to stop. Oh, you know what? I wonder if we could do a, a live. No, we have a guest that day. Do I have a guest that day? I don't know. Maybe we could do a live show right there. Or a call-in. Or a call-in or something, right? And they can educate us on that what's going on. That would be cool. On. 
Or we could push the guests back on June 14th and, and do a live show. It depends who you have, but right, yeah. let's go on. But anyway, <laughs> the, no, that's it. I mean, for more, does she have an email or a website they could go to for more information? We, we'll try to get that the, at the second break. Yeah. But um, but we're looking for uh, donations of yep. gift cards and, and you have, raffle you, items you have any, and stuff. Uh, email with Eddie Riley. Yeah, I can call it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean he's. Is he, he organizing? Be a good guy to call. All right, yeah. so we'll call Eddie and we'll try to get more information because what we'll do is we'll make a graphic for this show and we'll put it out on our Facebook page, our Instagram page, Twitter page, and on this show. We'll make a nice little yeah. graphic. So get we the have, word out. Yeah, That's absolutely. Great. And we have more than, I have more than enough time to do it. It's June 14th. I can actually get this done before <laughs> the... Get some practice in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dot my I's, cross my T's. <laughs> oh Almost boy. get it right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she was right. Oh, boy. All right, I know, all right, Sportsmaster, I know you have a question for Coach. Okay. Um, what did you learn from working with uh, Walter Pastor back in the 70s? Back in the 70s, I mean, he, he of course, t- taught me a lot when, as I had him uh, as a player. And then I was had a good number of years un- underneath him, uh, I, where you know I could always you know s- sit him down in the locker room before he went home and ask him a couple of questions, because uh, he you know he was he was very well knowledgeable, quite knowledgeable about the game of football. And the biggest thing is uh, the practice field stuff, okay? Because if you can get a, get a good feel for what you do. With, w- amongst yourself and with your, amongst your players, the combination of those two, the coaching staff and the players, to best get done what, you, what you're aiming to do on fr- Friday or Saturday night when you have the game. Because that's, that's the big thing, all right? Uh, whether it be a, 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 sh- a short down situation, whether it be just before halftime, whether it be at the end of the game, whether it be you know, being down by two, Two touchdowns are down by two points, all right, and uh, as opposed to uh, you, ha- you have a two touchdown lead, okay, and so on and so forth. So it's with so much that uh, you know I was able to get through him because he had a he certainly had a a good time good good long time of hitting all those situations, and it was always nice uh, to be able to, you know I did a number of times bump into. Uh, uh, Joe Paterno, you know, with him, okay? Because if we went to a... a That's uh, really cool. A, 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 a clinic, a football clinic. clinic. Yeah, yep. clinic. That was weird. Yeah, you know, and he was there. I mean, it was it was a good time. We, uh, we get to sit down and talk a lot about a lot of stuff. Yeah, Joe Paterno was the head football coach for years at Penn State. Penn State. Okay, so he sounds and familiar, very, and I'm oh, like, where do I know very, that name? I'm like, you, oh, if, yeah. If the top, <laughs> if you, somebody said, okay, give me the top ten college uh football coaches in America since the beginning of time. And Joe's you know, one of them. Besides Newt Rockney, the Joe mm-hmm. Paterno's got to be yeah. one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's unbelievable. Yeah, really. So is Walter still with us? Is he still yeah. alive? At 101? 101. Wow. Poten- potential Hall of Famer. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Right? Yeah. His name will be put in the committee next Absolutely. month. Absolutely. That's incredible. I, c- I thought they would, I mean, I didn't think they were joking, but when they said he was 101, I, I was waiting for someone to, Oh, we're only kidding, but they were sick. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, 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 I had I to ask, it. you know. Oh, I, would, I did, too. No, I did, I I did too. <laughs> and he has the point, guys. It was like my mom, like I was saying, my mother's 93. She has a wits about it, but she always picks on herself. I should know this. I'm the mother. I'm like, my, you're 93. Relax. <laughs> and, <laughs> enjoy no, watching right? the Wild Wild West show you know, on the Catholic <laughs> exactly. Channel. Relax. It's okay, Ma. Oh, boy. So let's talk about that uh, great presentation. We, we've joked about it up between breaks as far as what they did for you, uh, your last game over at Memorial Field, yep. Veteran Memorial Field, I believe it's called. Yep. And uh, you were coming down the stairs, and I'm watching the video over and over again, and um, I think Matt Nelson was still part of Abington TV, or Mr. Tachi was doing it. But when you came down the stairs, you're shaking all these guys, and now they're all grown men, and... <laughs> You know, and of course their face changes because they yeah. fill out and stuff yeah. like that, and you're shaking their hands. And I'm saying to myself, like I was saying between the breaks, were these past players? Past, past players, teams? yes. No I'm way. sorry. So the past players were all there f- okay. to honor Jim. Okay. At that, was it the beginning of the game or the half? I beginning of the game. Yeah. Wow. So they did way before, and they were all lined up, and his current players were lined up, and all the other guys were there, and he's going down the stairs, he's shaking all their hands, and all that. I'm like, there's no way that guy knows all those players. <laughs> I mean, those guys had to change, and you know, they were all. I mean, you could see the expression in these ex-players' eyes 
Like, well, he is a celebrity. He's a, he is. A, he doesn't know it, but he's touched on. He probably realizes, but how deeply he touched all these players. You can see it. The past players and the current players in their face. You can see him melting as Jim comes and just says hi to him like he's talking to anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, and I thought that was so special. You know, to see their reaction like that, I was like, "This is really, really cool." Oh, you definitely you know? influenced. I've been wanting it twice well. to see it to make sure I wasn't seeing things. You know, <laughs> it was awesome. It was really so cool. So, how did you remember all their names? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my assistant coach did that. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, that was cool. Well, you know, you you, you walk out the door, okay, and you, the field's down below. Right, right. Okay, so you walk in front of the locker room. And you get to the first set of stairs that'll take you down to the uh, to the football field and the track that goes around mm -hmm. it. Okay, so you, you walk down, but all the t all the people are all there right now in the stands. All right, and, and it's crowded right. like Thanksgiving. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. You know, I'm so sure. You go down and then you, it's like you, you do your pre pre game stuff, and you go back in, and you come back out, and the thing has doubled <laughs> that it was. 15 minutes ago because people were, you know, getting getting ready for Thanksgiving. All right. And, uh, you know, look at it. Holy smoly, man. That's <laughs> That's a lot I of was going to ask you because you were pacing a little bit back and forth as you were introduction, introducing your name. Yeah. And I could just pick the parking lot in the in the elementary school across the street, yeah. right, being packed. Yeah. And you were just, you know, taking them on when they get them. I don't know if he's like, oh, when are they going to get this done? I, I get a game to coach because <laughs> that's his coach mentality, you know. <laughs> and, again, for me personally, just to see everybody's expression was awesome. Oh, it was sure. so cool. Yeah. So cool. But yeah, it was it was crazy. Day. But like he said, it probably filled up, and he went. They went in the room. He come back like, where all these people come from? <laughs> <Yeah, you know? laughs> right? Yeah. I hope everyone bought him. A, well, I, I, I shouldn't say. I hope everyone bought him a soft drink. I was going to say a beer. That's a lot of beer because there's a lot of people <laughs> there that day. I'm kidding about the beer and the alcohol. Well, but. you know, the next building down is uh, the Legion building. Okay. And on Thanksgiving Day. The oh Legion, yes, the legions opened up real early. <laughs> okay, they, they, they open up about early seven o'clock in the morning, <laughs> you know, and all the guys go there and they just walk right across, you right. know, and they're right at the game, uh, right? <laughs> well, they got to warm up for it's cold weather, then yeah, Jim. They got to warm up for the game, you know. They probably bring the same beverage over to Whitman Hanson, <laughs> <Yeah. too. laughs> which is always a great wow. game to watch. But yeah, that was so cool. I can talk about that a thousand times. Just seeing their reaction and. Watching coach, like, let's get this going. I love the guys to death, but I got a game to get ready for. <laughs> you know, and I don't know, maybe I'm off the cuff there, but that's what I thought he was saying. But do you have any other questions for the coach? Uh, no, I got through all my questions. Okay. So, Jim, I do have a question. Okay. Go ahead. The highlight of your career. Highlight of my career, I think, would just simply say, uh, probably more than anything else, is when I got appointed. Wow. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> you know? All those years. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I know. Really, how can you how can you do fifty seven years? Which is why I asked. Well, I mean, that's I mean, like, that, that, and I look at it sometimes, and, and I say, how the heck did I do that? Yeah, you know. But the, the easiest thing was because you know, I, I always had that advantage of I grew up there. Mm -hmm. All right. Did I make did I make some uh, you know negative moves? Certainly, without a doubt. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then I was told about them, and I, I worked to, to work to adjust. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but I had so much background help, all right, uh, is, is I think what, what the biggest thing was. Because uh, my coaches were a great staff, uh, you know. As I said, I averaged, I averaged, we averaged being together by about like 32 years altogether. Wow. Okay, uh, amongst the 50 years that I was there. All right, so th that was the nicest thing. You know, and they they did their job as well as knowing and understanding that, you know, a good number, a good portion of them were teachers. Mm -hmm. You know, so they end the day at two o'clock, two fifteen, and how fast they can get to the locker room and get on the field <laughs> yeah. is you know is, is really good. You know, but there was a couple of them who had other jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was it wasn't easy for them, all right? But they did it and they got it done. And as I said, th the turnover wasn't very much, which made it really. Yeah, S really beautiful. Mm -hmm. It really, truly was. All uh, right, and uh, then you know we'd always always have a good time afterwards. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and then we just get ready for the next one. 
There you and go. I'm sure you all had families yep. and, and yeah. raising families, yeah, right? right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. So, Coach, my question, next question to you is, there, I, I've had the privilege to go to the New England Football Clinic in Rhode Island, yeah. you know, because mm-hmm. they put some pros in there. When are you coaching the next? When is your next clinic? <laughs> have you, you must have been asked a couple times already. I, I, I asked that to Eddie Rowley, who took over from me, and he, he says, yeah, I'll get back to you. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> Eddie said that? I'll get back to you? Yeah. I'm surprised that uh, those guys haven't reached out to you. As far as clinics go, and if you could recommend one to uh, a new coach, which one comes to mind? Up right oh, yeah, I, you can't believe. They're, you know, other than like the last probably 10 years, but other than that, I was going to every clinic, right. and my wife was not happy. <laughs> oh, I bet. Yeah. I bet. I mean, but you're just trying to say brushed okay. up on the game, right? The, 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 the New, uh, it was called the New England Clinic. It was was did good, but they, they were all good. Yeah, you all got something out of it. Okay. Yeah. You always met some friends and stuff like that, but uh, it really helped me. You know. Yeah. And, exactly. Uh, you know. Uh, it really helped. The staff was happy with, uh, uh, you know, with a good number of things that I would give them, get back to them. But then they, they, their time. they certainly they made their time too to get there together. So when right. we all got there together, it was really good. There you go. But uh, those are invaluable. All right, we're about to take our last break. You are listening to Four Deep Sports Talk here on the news station, thirteen twenty AM W A R A, and online, all one word, Four Deep Sports Talk. Dot com. If you want to call in when we get back at 508-222-1320. We have the Hall of Famer Jim Kelleher. We'll be back with him and more right after this. junior year of college I decided I wanted to be a truck driver. So my uncle he works here for like 40 plus years and he said choose these direct don't go nowhere else. Lo que me inspiró a mí fue mi mi teatro cuando él se graduó con su CD. I was telling my stepdad and my brother, hey, you know, this is probably one of the best jobs I've ever had. And I was showing them the type of income that I was making. The equipment that we have at Diesel Direct is the best. I need to go in the big unit, the Chacachera, so I'm trying to work myself up. I never really had a career before this, but I just want to do my job well and be accepted. And I feel like a lot of people, that's all they want, right? And you definitely get that here. Hey, welcome back. You are listening to 4 Deep Sports Talk here on the news station, 1320 AM WARA and online, all one word, 4DeepSportsTalk.com. We have the Hall of Famer Jim Kelleher, first inductee ever inducted into the 4 Deep Sports Talk Hall of Fame. And like, for people want to see the ceremony, it's on our YouTube page, all one word, 4 Deep Sports Talk. You can go to the website and see Jim's, um, Memo- I don't want to call it a memorial, but his uh, video on his uh, history over at Abington High School. That's on our HOF Hall of Fame page on 4DeepSportsTalk.com. Again, 508-222-1320. So I want to ask you, Coach, yes. the players you have right now, and uh, not to touch on the other players, but the future of Abington football going into next year. Yeah. Could you touch on some of the players that, I mean, there's, of course, the big roster, but some, some of the standouts that, some of the positions that come to mind up the top of your head? Well, you know, the, the you know, we, we, we work, the, the most important thing for, for coaches to do, in the, whether it be football, in, whether it be girls, guys, yeah. you know, is, is to get, get the kid's mind uh, thinking about 
how is it that I can help my teammates allowed a little bit more yeah uh, and if I can help out my teammates a little bit more then I'm gonna, I'm gonna help out the team a little bit more right okay uh, and we're always talking and I always want the other coaches to intercede as much as they want you know not that yeah. I'm gonna be saying everything that and whatever I say is the is the truth and it, nothing else other than that right which is which is a false statement ever, ever to make okay but uh, I, I, that's what I think helped me the most. Okay, is you know when I when I sat down and thought about it, I said I got to get my staff to think that just that they're just as much as being a head coach as I am being a head coach, and I'm not going to do anything in terms of showing off about being a head coach. I'm very fortunate to have that title, and I'm very glad, you know. But at the same time, it. it it doesn't mean anything because our job is to get those kids to play together and to get those kids to get that job done, what they're responsible for doing, and to continue that. And when mistakes are made, how are we going to adjust and get back to what we want to do? It, but And that's the major thing amongst all the coaches and the staff. Okay. So I got a call. I got a call. Okay, Dom, a call. I have a text from, this is from Tom Joyce from the Quincy Sun. And he, we talked about this a little bit. First, you mentioned about the haircut. He showed me a picture of your green hair. Yeah. Right. And uh, he said, and he mentioned his relationship with um, Silver and St. George. Um, could he mention how Abington and Marshall, he's, an Ab he's a Marshall guy, yeah. uh, did the wing tee camp together before right. the season? And also how Kelleher, you, of course, you let Marshfield have the practice at Abington High School in 2014 and prepare for the South sectional title against King Philip. Now, what's he talking about there? Well, yeah, they had they they came over to Abington uh, to to practice. I don't know if they had something going on at at their school that they okay. couldn't get there. So I said, <laughs> "Come on over," you know, because uh, we had gone to camp years ago. We'd gone to camp together. Okay. Okay. And Lou, Lou and I always saw each other at at the uh, at the clinics. Yeah. Okay. All right. And a lot of. Uh, uh, w wing T guys saw each other d at at those clinics. So that that certainly is as much as it is now. Uh, it was really high then in terms of uh, the f the wing T being something that you know you should look at, right? As opposed as opposed to the uh, option p option form. Uh, and stuff, that's big stuff now. Like that. You know that. Yeah. yeah. You know. So th that was the f good fun of it. You know, oh, okay. When, when you you if we went somewhere and it was away from home. And we're in a hotel all together, you know. Would be somewhere up in an open room in a hotel and going over all of our things that we want to get done and asking questions to each other, all right? Because uh, you never had needed to hold anything back. It was just something that that you were doing. But at the same time, you know, whatever you got, and if you can help your, your buddy over there, then do it because he's going to help you sometime. Mm -hmm. Now, do you believe? Uh, like the pros do, they'll do the thing for the week, and then they'll play that team in preseason. Are you a big fan of that, where you have the kids, let's say, hypothetically, you go to, let's say, Southeast or whatever, and you, oh, they come to you, yeah. and you guys work out for the week. Yeah. Is that, are you big, do you like that idea? We've done it, uh, you know, and uh, it, I'm not going to say I don't like that idea. Yeah. I, mean, I think it, it can be good, but we've done it a couple times, and it, it, not, not anything more than that. Uh, because I, you know, it, the idea was you don't have too many, too much time. You only got the basically the three days. Yeah. Because you play on a Friday night, you know, uh, you have a sub varsity. You might have a freshman game on Saturday. You have Sunday off. All right. Uh, are you going to have a coaching staff meeting on Sunday night or Monday night? You don't want to get the families mad at you. Okay. <laughs> uh, you have a JV. You have a JV game on on Monday. So therefore, basically, you got uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday to get it done. Yep. Because Thursdays are usually a walkthrough because you play the game on Friday. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, so that Tuesday and Wednesday are the big days. You got to okay. get anything and everything done, and we try to talk as we, as we're in the locker room together. Uh, the offensive coaches will talk with the offensive guys. The defensive coaches will talk with defensive guys, and going over that and what we want to get work to get done. Nice. So, do you do a strategy for every game? Yeah, we you do. You do. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll take the the film that we get we can look at 
and we break it down and mm-hmm. put it put it in, on some sheets and we we have that all coaches who have the same thing have that during practice and when you have the offensive time coming in all right you you're going to show the defense that you're going to face that you think you're going to face and certainly as i said you know what Mosh, what uh, rockland might show me show me in one game what hasn't been maybe what they've been doing beforehand because mm. maybe i have a different offense mm-hmm. okay all right uh so it dictates that way. I mean, your defense is predicated on what that offensive does and what their mm-hmm. formations are and how successful they are, all right? And you, you, you just simply try to stop that. Mm-hmm. So my next question, this is like a fan, now that you're, you're basically a fan now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And before you had to... Go open, Green Wave. Right, there you go. There you go. I love it. I, I love it. That's awesome. So before they used to play NCAA rules back yeah. in the day, what was it, eight years ago, something yeah. like that, then they brought in the National Federation High Schools, right. NFA. What was the big challenge and what didn't you like about that? <sighs> now that, you, now that you, you know, you're retired now yeah. and... It's you're in the fan chair now, and anything come to mind? Like, like I can't believe it. Why did we go to this rule? What, what's going on? I want, you know what I mean? Anything come yeah, to mind? I mean, offensively, defensively, and special teams. Uh, uh, I didn't know if something stuck out. I just thought no, I'd ask. No, you know, I, as I said, I mean, I, I, I tried to make sure. I mean, I, I would always ask my athletic director if there's any other – Thing that I should have in front of me as we're getting ready for our, to start this season, right? Okay, uh, you know, is there anything new that we don't haven't done uh, the year before? Okay, that I got to know about right now because it's important that I that I know that, and, and he knows that, it, just like it would be for a, a girl sport or uh, another another sport in boys. Right. I mean, well, you, you don't want to get hit with the, the curveball. Yeah. The restrictions, the limits, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you just go on, you got to work and stay within that. Right. You know? uh, and the biggest thing is don't don't overload, all right, because you're not going to gain anything by overloading. Yep. All right. You're going to have about 12, 14 basic plays, okay, and you're going to be repeating them over the, over the, over the uh, time that you're playing during the day or night, okay. Uh, you might run it out of a, a closed uh, offense. You might run it out of an open offense. All right, uh, you know. And but and defensively, is a little bit different because I think defensively you stay with what you've been doing as the main defense and don't make too many changes to that. Okay, as much as you do make more changes offensively. You know, defense is is really whatever you've been doing defense. You're going to be doing every single of the 12 games that you have on your schedule. Right. Uh, All right. And, you know, as I said, and the biggest thing is, you know, are we 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 having a team that just passes the ball like crazy, you know? And you look at it and say, how can you do that in high school? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Pass the ball that that many times. Right. You know, as opposed to a team that, uh, you know, will run 48 plays and have 10 passes, you know, during the day, that kind of stuff. So it's uh, it's you, you you just say to yourself, don't overload. Right. Stop. And sometimes I would I would say to myself, I'd say to Eddie Riley, hey, if you, you see I'm I'm getting too too stupid about this thing, you know, tap me on the shoulder and say, hey hey, cut it, cut cut this out. He didn't say that that <laughs> much, did he, Coach? Yeah. He probably didn't say it that much. Yeah. Uh, that was the nicest thing. My coaching staff. I mean, I. I wanted them to make sure that we, you know, we discuss things. Yep. You know, if there's any question, you know, open up a discussion about it, okay? Because you guys are just as important as I am, even though I might have the the title uh, as head coach, and now Eddie has the title of yeah. head coach, you know, and he's going to get that, that feeling of <laughs> about that. But you get to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm going to be watching it on the sideline. <laughs> hey, remember that? Yeah, that's awesome. So, Co- yeah. Coach Kell, what's next in <laughs> retirement? Well. Doing some fishing. I, I'm, or... I'm, I'm, truthfully, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure I get out to Western Massachusetts, <laughs> okay, and for a good long time, like about four or five days. Good for you. All right, sometime, all right, 
to see my daughter. Nice. Oh, good for you. That's okay. awesome. She's in, she's in East Long Meadow. Oh, nice. that's all right. And also my son, Shane. Yeah. All right. He's in, he's in Roslindale. Okay. You know? So uh, I got to make sure I spend a good, a good amount of time there. Uh, how do I say it? Uh, you know, building up the com- camaraderie again. Absolutely. Yeah, right, right. I hear you. Because I, I know, you. I know she's not too happy. <laughs> uh, well, she will be. She will be. I thought he was going to say, "I'm getting to Western Mass to go to Six Flags or something." <laughs> or Disney. Or, or Disney. Or but I, I, but that, I do want to. I do. I do want to get out. And, and this is why it's good because she she lives out in East Long Meadow. I I, I got to get out to UMass. I want to make sure I get nice. out to UMass because I, nice. I want to see. I want to see go to one of the games and catch up a little bit with uh, some of my former players that I played with. That's great. Awesome. You know? That's a great That's idea. I was, I was fortunate. <laughs> like I said, I, I I had Greg Landry as my, as the quarterback throwing the ball to me when I was at, at UMass. Wow. If you know mm-hmm. Greg Landry with the Detroit Lions. Yeah, I remember that. Know? Wow. And if there was anybody who was a unique person, Greg Landry was the most amazing person I've ever met. Mm-hmm. He, he was... Such a great football player, but he never ever gave the impression that he approached it like that. He just approached it as I'm a player amongst all, all my teammates. Mm. He mm-hmm. was a unique guy. He was Team a player. great guy. Absolute great guy. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so, Coach, we got 30 seconds. Can you do give us a quick shout out? Uh, who you want to shout out to in thirty seconds? Is that possible? Aside <laughs> from your lo- lovely, yeah, I want to, I want to make sure I shout there? out to my coaching staff. <laughs> yep. Okay, uh, I'm going to say I'm all excited about uh, you guys coming up this year and uh, going to continue the the uh, the hard work that we have to do and the success that uh, we 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 try to try to get get. Uh, get done uh, during during the uh, football season. I thank you very much. M- most important to all you guys who had been with me f- from the from the time that I started and you, when you started and how much time we spent our time together and how we worked out the good times to make them good uh, the bad times and to make them good times and how much fun we had and all the laughs. The biggest thing is all the laughs uh, that we had as well as certainly, you know, knowing how many times we had to solve this problem, solve that problem. And we're about to go off in two seconds. I'm sorry. (laughs) Thank you very much. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, folks. Really appreciate it. Thanks. If you've got any other questions, I'm going to answer them. (laughs) For Deep Sports Talk, would like to thank its supporters, including PTU Clinic. Find out more about Bridgewater and Buzzard Bay's newest physical therapy clinic and what they have to offer at ptuclinic.com. Adria Restaurant and Banquet Facility located at 436 Oak Street in East Bridgewater. Visit adriarestaurant.net for more. Diesel Direct, your reliable source for fuel delivery. Log on to dieseldirect.com to get more information. And by the New England Knockouts, Brockton's brand new Frontier League baseball team. Get your tickets for the inaugural season today at knockoutsbaseball.com. This has been a presentation of Fort Deep Sports Talk, where high school and youth athletics come first.